coming up, you know, I didn't feel like this neighborhood wasn't safe. It was just, you know, people that didn't have a lot. And uh, now I look back and, you know, I don't know how safe it is now, but still looks like not a lot of development in the, in the community. Uh, still looks like, you know, a bunch of hardworking people that still don't have a lot. Now, I distinctly remember um, kind of a life-changing moment where I had a friend almost right here on this corner. He kind of got involved in drugs and he was killed. I just decided I wanted to work harder and, and you know, go and uh, do something different with my life. I'm assuming this was 1636. 1634 would have been right here. My mom and myself and sister, we live with my grandmother and grandfather, and uh, it was a three-story home. It was the one place where, you know, we at least felt safe. The store not far from here, uh, one of my cousins and I, I remember we were there shoplifting, 10 years old, and uh, we got caught. And the owner called our parents, and I remember just being on punishment for the entire summer. His punishment wasn't as hard as mine. You know, he ended up continuing down a life of, of uh, crime, and I ended up going in another direction. I initially thought about going into the Marines after high school. The Marine Corps, you know, honor, courage, and commitment, you know, when you think about those values and you live them on a daily basis, they cannot help but be ingrained in your system. You think about the people that are highly dependent on you, that are surrounding you, you know, the platoon that you are a part of, the men and women that you serve with, you know, it's about not letting them down. It provided a lot of opportunity and helped establish a foundation for me. And uh, in short, Marines changed my life. My greatest inspiration is my mother, by far. Well, her thing was education, you know, would open doors that ignorance would keep closed. She would always tell me that education, education would open, open doors, doors that, ignorance that ignorance would keep closed. So she was really, really adamant about getting a good education. And she worked three jobs to send me to a Catholic school because she thought that education was better than the public school that was in the neighborhood that I grew up in. She taught me to, you know, walk past the things that were bad in the neighborhood that we grew up in and the neighborhood I lived in and really start to get exposure to other things. And education brought those opportunities to me. So I'm, I'm fortunate to have had a mother that has had such an impact on my life like that, which is why I'm inspired and motivated to give back to individuals like all of you. What did you get out of there? What did you get out of that then? Uh, you know, you're pretty, uh, courageous person and you persevered. Yeah? Yeah, you're a leader in your own right. I say, if not me, then who as it relates to communities like this and to actually speak to our at-risk youth like myself, you know, to help them shape that character. I feel like I'm thriving on a daily basis because uh, I do wake up with a purpose. I think about Keith Palmer, I think about, you know, that dash between the time I was born and the time I will die and what will people say. How did I live? I want to be a man of character, a man of integrity, and when I think about character and the person Keith Palmer is, that's how I frame it up and, and that's what I want to be known for. So if each of you can commit to wake up every morning, to look at yourself in the mirror and to say, you know what, today I'm going to have an if not me then who moment, that I challenge myself to be big in something little. And my brother Travis, he was very much big in the little things. And that helped him to be big in the big things when it really counted. And if you're applying this idea of being big in the little things every day, when that big challenge hits you, you're gonna be able to face it head on. I didn't personally know Travis Mannion, but when I heard the story and how he lived, honestly, I'm inspired. When Travis spoke those five words at the top of the stairs, I knew that they were powerful words. Learning the ideals of service and sacrifice starts with an organization like the Travis Mannion Foundation. And I know they're fully committed to spreading those ideals all across the country. The If Not Me Then Who movement, it's bigger than any one individual. Thousands of veterans and families of the fallen have come together to redefine what it means to live a life of character. And to think that those five words we're the start of it all. We're the start of this movement that he created. It's a pretty incredible legacy for one person to leave.